All right, let's continue on chapter three. Everything's fine. The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. Oh. This is when she gets that phone call, right? I just f finished, or I finished jarring a mess of jam last night. Uh-huh. So that'll need to get delivered into town today. Okay. So what did you and Rolo get up to yesterday? Oh, Rolo had to do things, so I kind of just poked around town. I set the jam down by the front door. There's two batches to drop off. Mm-hmm. One for Mr. Tolliver at the bag and wag. Another for Miss uh Fat Frat Fratelli Frelli at the diner. Fratelli. Oh, and Mr. Nuncreed? He said he wanted some more. I expected as much. Yes. He seems to take in a particular interest in my jam. There is there are some extra in the basket for the aesthetic <laughs> or aesthetic enthusiastic gentleman. Just make sure Fratelli and Tolliver get the ones on top. No problem. Off with you now, while the day is still young. Oh, thanks, Grandma. Do we go to the backyard for a bit? Oh. What's that flower? What's this flower so like different compared to other flowers? Nothing special. All right, time to deliver some jam. Oh, okay. She just said bye. Hello. Hello, this is Jupiter Hat Hartford. Hartford? Hartford? Yeah. Before you hang up, just hear me out. I have a business proposition. The simple matter is we both have the same problem that needs solving. Very well, we can meet tonight. Interesting. Can I drop it? I cannot drop it. Can I sit in the chair with it? I cannot. Can I throw in the fire? Oh my gosh. It's kind of burning. Alrighty. Two. Drop off these jams. What? He's alive? Okay. Sorry about yesterday. Oh yeah! He had to do his errands with Roxy. So I literally just fought Among Us by myself. Okay. Okay, this is super interesting. Sorry about yesterday. Roxy can be so annoying. But good news, no more boring chores for me today. Did you make it to the old Valentine warehouse? So what did you find? Give me the dirt. Something happened. There was someone else there. What? Who was it? Was it aliens? I knew it would be aliens. No. Zombies? No. Alien zombies? What else could it possibly be? Rolo. I gotta deliver these to the town first. We can catch up after. Oh, is it a whole thing? It sounds like a whole thing. Yeah, I shouldn't talk about it here. Meet me at the treehouse tonight. I'm not sure what this treehouse is that you're speaking of. <sighs> Meet me at mission control. Roger that, space cadet. Can I deliver some to my pops? Can I sneeze for this? I can't. Hello, pops. Need some jam? Nope. Oh my gosh. That is 
Hop my way over. Oh my gosh, do I move faster like this? What the heck? Can I go here finally? Nope. Alrighty. Let's drop off some jam. So, um, we got some jam to these guys. So we got refuse fight. I think we just cling on to... Wow, we have so much. What the heck? Huh. Did I use all of these already? I don't want to... I want to make sure. I don't think so. Huh. Uh oh That's when I, uh, literally was in the phone booth. Okay. Let's head back. Joey! Wait, watch your step. Oh, sorry. There's a whole family of beetles here. You've, they've gone missing. I thought they were sort of wandering around. Everyone has a home, Lika. Even beetles. Luca checked the soles of his sandals. I think they're okay. It, that's weird that they're gone. They went missing, then the festival preparations began. Do you think the noise scared them away? Something like that. Just watch your step, okay? Bro, how can I watch my step? I literally can't see the bugs. So... Can I give you jam? Do you think Jim would be a good bait? I guess it depends on what you're trying to catch. At this point, anything. Can I go back? I know I can go back to this memory. <laughs> okay. Stupid. Stupid. Can I give you jam? You tell those jerks. It doesn't matter how many boxes they pile up. I ain't moving. <laughs> Yo, you guys are evil. Evil. Alright. Let's talk to you first. I can't even talk to you. Let's go up here. Oh, shoot. Let's go up here. I can't even talk to any of you. Okay. Is this... Is this tree the same as my tree? Wait a minute. Is it? Uh, am I seeing things? Okay, what part are you on in the book? Anger from the past, mistakes not yet made, and the glimmering hope for the future. He carried them all in equal parts everywhere he went. Oh heavens, what a burden to bear. That's me! That's me, of course. Hello, everyone. Mr. Wilder, I can trust you have some time to- I trust you have time to chat? Eris Valentine, oldest of Sharper Valentine's children, and heir to the Valentine fortune, had a way of making questions seem like demands. Certainly. What seems to be the problem? Mr. Wilder had learned to assume that if he was hearing from Eris, it was because she had taken issue with something he had put in the paper. I can't help but notice that the front page of this morning's paper was consumed with stories about this silly festival. Well, yes, that is the news of today. But there is no mention of the museum, nor the van nor the foundation through which it is endowed. In endowed? I'm sorry, Miss Valentine. My readers are more so interested in the town's future rather than anyone's family in particular. There is a time, Mr. Wilder, when the goings on what when the goings on for my family is the only thing this town cares about. Well, things change, ma'am. And you know, change is dangerous. If you finish that thought, I will make the monocle a permanent fixture of your atomony. Atomony? Atomony? 
My apologies. Good day, Miss Valentine. Did I give you the impression this conversation was finished? Mr. Wilder averted his gaze and began to polish his monocle. Well, good day, Mr. Wilder. Nice to ya stick it for you. Huh? Can I talk to you? No. Off to see the ice cream guy. How do you keep the ice cream cold? They keep them on ice. Where'd you get the ice from? I don't know. Somewhere cold? How do you know they keep somewhere cold cold? Look, Bert. Do you want ice cream or not? No, I'm good. <laughs> oh, you're the evil guy. Huddled at his counter, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining apples. More accurately, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining one apple. Hello? Eep. With a yelp, Mr. Tolliver fumbled the apple, flailing at the air as it fell. Well, sorry. Ah, uh, no bother, no bother. He leaned forward and lowered his voice. I see you have something for me. Yeah, Gray made some jam. I'm supposed I'm supposed to give it he to you. Leaned in a bit further. Jam? Yeah, the ones on top. This is like drugs or something. She wrote your name on Mr. them. Tolliver leaned back, speaking loud enough for anyone to hear. Ah, yes, the jam. Thank you so much for delivering this jam to me. He reached forward and snapped up the jars of jam, giving Luca a little wink. I shall put these on my store shelves post haste. Okay, I should finish my deliveries. Of course. Of course. He leaned in for a final whisper. Of course. Interesting. Can I touch this? No way. I'm kicking the melon. Oh my gosh. Oh, well, I got an achievement for that, huh? Can I go in here? Oh, I don't want to watch it again. Oh, thank gosh. I can skip it. Alrighty. Let's go to the diner. Let's see little Dawn first, too. Hey, Dawn. Oh. Hi, Ed, Luca. Or, hey, Ed, Luca, what's up? Dawn had dreams of becoming a big-time reporter. At night, she searched for the story that could be her big break. By day, she hawked papers at the newsstand. Oh. You got... They got you on jam delivery, eh? Yep. Hey, Dawn, have you noticed anything weird around town lately? What sort of things? Stuff going on at the old downtown building. Hmm, you might say I heard things. I'm working on a story about it right now. So what's going on? Can't see quite yet. Oh, okay, so we did... We have listened to this conversation before. So, I still need to follow up a few leads. Keep me in the loop, okay? Sure, sure. Have you seen the new kid around lately? Er, what? That's okay, that makes sense. New kid? Yeah, came from the big city. Her parents both got jobs here. And, but get this. One of them was, uh, one of them is working for William Kerr and per Perennial Harvest. The other one is working for Harith Valentine. And the Valentines represents, the Valentines represent Beacon Pines Pass. Perennial Harvest has positioned itself as it, this town's future. Makes, must make for some interesting dinner table conversations. I can imagine. So that's what Beck is from. Interesting, I wonder who's working for who. This is a new place? Oh, shoot. I just want to look at the stuff. The mayor! Can I open this? Can I look in the trash? No. Okay, let's talk to you. If I could be left- <laughs> If I could just be left alone, young Mr. Beanhorn. Oh, sure. Sorry to bother you. It's just that- <laughs> 
Mr. Kier has asked me to make the opening speech at the festival. Being mayor and all, you might expect me to be a charismatic speaker. The truth is, I'm terribly nervous. I really don't think I'm cut out for this sort of thing. Cut out for being a mayor or for public speaking? Both, I suppose. I never really choose any of. I never really chose any of this. The more of a deputy, more of a duty to my family, for a legacy. That sounds like a heavy burden. As for the festival, just speak from the heart. I'm sure you'll do great. Hi, uh, here's your jam. Can I go in your kitchen? No, I can't. A coffee sounds really good right now. Well, if it isn't my favorite little gym runner. Hi, Miss Fratelli. Look at you. Forward and pinch Luca's cheek. You're all skin and bones. Is Granny not feeding you? She is. It's just, I understand. I know, I taught your mama how to cook back in the day. You may not even remember, but you and her used to help out at the diner. See at, uh, see that picture over there? That's you helping your mama back in the day. So cute, running around in your little apron taking orders. <sighs> the whole situation just breaks my heart. What happened to Eleanor? Break. Huh. I've got a feeling she's out there somewhere, yarning to be with you again. Few things in these worlds can keep your mother from your son. Luca shifted the basket uncomfortably. Oh yes, let's see Mrs. here. Mrs. Fratelli lifted the cloth and inspected the jam. Ah, they're even, they, they even have my name on them. How thoughtful. She carefully lifted out her jars of jam. Tell your grand, tell your grand hello for me, Luca. Will do. Thank you. Can I see the pictures? Play bunny? Excuse me? Can I see where I can use break? By any chance? No, I can't. That's okay. When the opportunity comes to me, then it shall be presented. Off to see Mr. Creepy Nun Creed. Can I go in the library? Actually, oh my goodness, I'm stuck. I can. Can I talk to you? Hi, K Kato. Good afternoon, Lika. Can I help you find something? Maybe, maybe not. Try me. Well, there's been some weird stuff going on at the old Valentine warehouse. Can't say I know anything about the old warehouse. But empty hives don't stay empty for so long. Huh? Motion to the book in front of him. The more I read about bees, the more sim the more similarities I see with people. If a hive collapses and fails, it doesn't stay empty for so long. A new queen will set up shop pretty quickly. So you're saying it would make sense for someone new to start using the warehouse. Nature abhorts, abhorts a vacuum? What? Hi, dog boy. Hey, Jess. Oh, hey, Luca. Have you seen this new issue of Hank Atomic? Not yet. No spoilers, please. It's awesome. It's a flashback. No spoilers, please. We get to see how mid manner Harry Adams becomes. Hank Atomic, man of space justice. Jess, no spoilers. Oh, sorry. My point is, you're gonna love it. <sighs> Alright, Jess. Catch you later. Roger that, space cadet. Aw, cute. Well, we'll deliver this jam to creepy little nun creed next time. <laughs>